it's Sharon here on this cold, damp November morning. The tree, the leaves are coming off the trees now, uh, losing the colour, turning brown. And I'm inside doing some crafting on my journal here. This is my Christmas grungy journal, if you've been following. Um, I have done a little bit more since you last saw me. I have um, added this book spine sort of flipped it the other way up put some diamond glaze on just to finish that off i've drawn up my spine here with some vintage style fabric which i've got rust everywhere which i have coffee dyed and there's the back there's a little bit more of that spine on there inside is looking pretty here is page 14 through to 25 as you can see i think it's looking really good and um, I've just done page 13 I'm gonna zoom in a bit I feel like I'm miles away I've just done page 13 and this is a got a magnet on it it's got some ephemera in an old check from 1893 and some vintage style ephemera this is an old postcard this is a postcard that's a tim holtz christmasy style wintry style card and they are just in there and closed with a couple of magnets this is an envelope i'm working on and this will become number 12. so i've been thinking about the front and what i wanted to do and then i had a little bit of a what i think was a brainwave and uh, I had lots and lots of these. Let me just get one. Um, rusted bottle caps. But as you can see, where well, you can see the rust falling off. But if you do rub them, the rust comes does come off. So let's get any focus there. So what I did was covered them in diamond glaze. Where's my diamond glaze? Here it is diamond glaze which i got get from america because i can't seem to get it in the uk so i covered them in diamond glaze not only do they look fab because they are shiny obviously with diamond glaze but that rust does not rub off now i am going to put, i've got a few extra so i'm going to pop a few of these in the shop let's just move that up there i just move this rust i'm going to be having a rust bath so when i was playing with these i decided to take it one step further and i created these what do you think i think they look absolutely fantastic so i made these on thursday evening it's now saturday morning so a good 36 hours they've taken to set because i've been dying to do the video to show you some are still like a little bit milky they've not quite dried yet and this is how i made them i got my bottle top let's take this one my rusted bottle top I'll have to zoom in so you can see i've got my rusted bottle top i got my bead let's get a let's get a green one so we can get this little green cube here and I got my diamond glaze. I put my diamond glaze in. Now I didn't want loads because basically I was just going to glue them in at first, but then I thought they would look pretty in the diamond glaze. So I put my diamond glaze in. Swipe it up. I wasn't bothered about it coming over the top of the bead because I wanted because they are glass beads. These I want glass and metal beads. I wanted that element to show and I just pop them in the middle like that now if the diamond glaze hasn't gone right to the very edges I have just used a stick I mean some of the uh, rust does mix in with the glaze but that doesn't bother me I was going to go and get some uh, resin to do this but I thought I've got the diamond glaze let's just use it and I know it'll be Sorry, I'm not even on. I'm not even on screen doing that. There I am, I'm just going round the edge with my skewer, making sure that's in. It's that busy chatting away to myself. 
And I just set that to dry. Like I say, here in the UK, it's been taking me about 36 hours. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit now. So yeah, those are those rusted hinges that I've used that I'd got out of the office. They just come apart like, like this. They're a bit more difficult to deal with because they are rusted. That's basically how they work. And they do fasten down with those little fasteners. Right, so then I thought, right, I'm going to use these to decorate the fronts. And I thought, right, I can do a Christmas tree with them. Simples. So then I thought, right, well, I will put some fabric background. So I have this. Just let me get this and show you. This is what I got at a charity shop. And it's somebody's work that they've done. Um, like a slow stitch piece. So I cut a piece off. And this, I thought, actually did look a bit like a Christmas tree. You've got your triangle. You've got a trunk, so I've got it, I've stitched, cut it off. I'm just shabbing it up as well with the hessian there. I've stitched around some of it and I'm going to put that on the front and I'm going to make my Christmas tree on here. I'm going to put that about there, I think. So um, let me sit down. And let's get on with this. So I'm going to get my fabric tack, which is gunged up there. I'm so excited to work with these little bottle tops. I've been like up and down stairs to my craft room. Come on, have they dried? Have they dried? Have they set? I keep coming and looking and here they are. They've set. So I was like, you <laughs> I've been working on Christmas things. I've done the scroll journal, which has had a really uh, good response on YouTube. If you've not seen that, have a look at it. You'll find it on my list. There we go. So I'm going to stick that on there. And then I must say, when you're drying these bottle caps, make sure you put them on a flat surface. Otherwise, they... Uh, diamond glaze will will run because it is a liquid that's on there so then I'm going to get my diamond glaze and I'm going to start with the top of the tree so I'm going to pick one for the top do I want this one or do I want that one I'm going to pick this big bead at the top this one has got like a large golden filigree bead inside it you can see see the top of the bead there. I'm going to put that at the top of the tree. Then I'm going to put these on as well. Now they're going to be difficult just to stick around there. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to put some glue in. I'm going to get some scrap paper. We all have plenty of that, don't we? Actually, I'm going to use the tissue from uh, this part of the napkin. I'm going to put that in there. If I glue that into there, then that gives me a surface to put my glue on to glue this way up. There we go. So we want two of these. That's one. Um, let's get a green one. This is a lovely green vintage bead there. Crystal cut bead. Just using fabric tack. I don't know if I said that. Let's go uh, red. That one's not quite dry. If you look, they have little milky parts in and that's where they're not quite dried that was in the middle i'll take a silver most of these i think 99.9% .9 of these beads are vintage beads well not i think i know they are let's take a little bit more of that tissue and i think we'll have i love this smiley face one
you are ready for Christmas. We've just had Halloween, haven't we? Oh, I've been there. I love Halloween. I've just received an amazing parcel off Francis, who lives... I can't say your last name, Francis, I'm sorry. Francis lives in Pennsylvania. And I sent Francis a, go, a spooky skeleton that I'd made into a Miss Havisham character. And Francis has sent me an amazing package back again. So full of some of the things I've never even seen. I've seen them on TV. So we're in the UK, we do not seem to have as many Halloween. Another, another one. We don't seem to get as many Halloween uh, goodies as you do in America. I mean, it's not that long since we were just decorating turnips in the UK. So this is coming together in a really lovely pattern. It looks really, really effective. Let's get another one of these. I think we'll have a green, very rusted. It's a J2R. Uh, that a bit more napkins. Of course, I haven't got any just to hand. Actually, I'm just going to use a little bit of news or news paper that I've got in my scraps just to hand here. I haven't thought before I just started gluing then as to how I was going to fix these down. As only as I picked it up to glue it, I thought, whoa, that is not going to glue on there. That can go there. I'm not going to take it one bigger because I'd end up going off the edge of the page, but I'm going to put a row of three. It's quite a big, like a toggle type bead there. That's the one. Red, green, gold. Let's have a look. Silver. That's pretty. And I'm going to put another. A nice big green one there. That's a nice colour too to have face up the turquoise. So that is my Christmas tree. I'm just, uh, I don't know if anybody's done this before. It's just something that came into my head while I was in bed thinking about what to do now I do we using some of this rust here let's see if that'll just break off oh let's just get some of my own scissors and see if I can cut that off it's so sort of fragile it is it's just cut into it use your old scissors if we put that there, we could put it there like that, or there, that way up, I think looks better. Let's just put a bit of glue on. The bottom. But what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to get my fabric tack. Everything ends up messy when you're working with rust. It's not my fabric tack. This is my diamond glaze. I'm going to get my little paint brush. And I'm just going to paint. This is literally what I do with the bottle tops. Just paint the diamond glaze on. So that will seal that. There's the bottom of my tree. But you know what I'm also going to do? I'm really going mad today. Frosted Crystal Distress Crystals. I'm just going to take a few of these. These are Tim Holtz Ranger. Ranger, yeah. 
I'm just going to sprinkle that on there. Then when that's dry, it'll get have that frosted diamond look about it. So there we go, a really quick video. Um, like I said, these, this is going to take about 48, 36 to 48 hours to dry. I will put some of these in my shop because I have made loads because I love them. And I uh, hope you've enjoyed this little video and I hope you like how that turned out. See you soon. Bye-bye.